Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm here with a full walkthrough of the 2025 AP Pre-Calculus Free Response questions. Hope this is helpful to you, so let's jump in. Okay, number one, we have a table of values and a function. In part AI, we're gonna do the composition H equals G of F and H of one. So H of one equals G of F of one f of 1 is equal to 1.75 according to the table, so we get g of 1.75. And then I recommend that you run over to Desmos, plug the function g in, and evaluate it at 1.75, and I'll show you how to do that. Here we have the function g, and then we just type in g of 1.75, and you get 0 0.333. 4, 8, which we would report as 0.333. Second part of question A, find the value of F inverse of 3.5 or indicate that it's not defined. So 3.5 is the Y value for the function F. So the Y value for F inverse is going to be the X value that corresponds with 3.5 from F, namely zero. So have zero there. Part B, find all values of x as a decimal approximation for which g of x equals zero or indicate that there are no such values. We'll head over to Desmos again. Here we are back at Desmos and g of x equals zero when it crosses the x-axis. So we can click right there, get that one, click right there, that one, click right there, that one. And we would report the x values accurate to at least three decimal places. So there we have the approximations to three decimal places. The second part, determine the end behavior of g as x increases without bound. Express your answer using mathematical notation of a limit. This would be just the limit as x approaches infinity of g of x, and we would say negative infinity. Because the function's cubic and the leading coefficient is negative, we know it's going to decrease without bound as x increases without bound. Part C, based on the table, which of the following function types best models the function f? Linear, quadratic, exponential, or logarithmic? We could take these function values and graph them in Desmos. You would see that it's going to be a graph that decreases and is concave up, which is hinting at exponential. But also notice that as each x value increases by 1, one, the y value decreases by exactly one half. So this is exponential. And then give a reason for our answer there. We basically say that um, as x increases by one, the corresponding function value decreases by a factor of one half. So there it is written out for you in a concise statement. And that's it for question number one. So number two is a pretty big context here. We have a table of values for the number of months after the musician began using the app and the corresponding total number of plays for the song since it's released and the function D that can model this situation. So part A, I, use the given data to write three equations that can be used to find the values for constants A, B, and C. So if you look at the first table values, it's 0 and 25. That means when you plug 0 into D, the answer should be 25. So we would have A times 0 squared plus B times 0 plus C equals 25. And then when you plug 2 in, you would have A times 2 squared plus B times 2 plus C equals 30. And then the third one, A times 4 squared plus b times 4 plus c equals 34. For part 2, found the values of a, b, and c as decimal approximations. You can do this in Desmos, but if you look at this first equation, since those x values or t values are 0, this is just going to be that c equals 25. And then equation two here and three, those are going to simplify greatly. Equation two is going to become 4a plus 2b plus 25 equals 30. And equation three is going to be 16a plus 4b plus 25 equals 34. So both of these we can solve by subtracting the constant 25 to the right side. So 4a plus 2b 
equals 5 and 16a plus 4b equals 9. The next thing we're going to do is multiply that first equation by negative 2 and that's going to cancel out our, our b term. So we would have negative 8a plus 16a is going to give us 8a equals, so there'll be negative 10 plus 9, which is negative 1. So a is going to be negative 1 eighth. Then from there, if a is negative 1 eighth, then I could go and plug this back into my equation right here. So I have 16 times negative 1 eighth plus 4b equals 9. 16 times negative 1 eighth is negative 2 plus 4b equals 9. So 4b equals 11 and b equals 11 fourths. So what we would have is a equals negative 0 0.125, b equals 2.75, and c equals 25. Part B, use the data to find the average rate of change of the total number of plays for the song in thousands per month from zero to four months. We would have D of four minus D of zero all over four minus zero, which from the table values would be 34 minus 25 over four or nine fourths, which is 2.25 thousand songs per month. The second part of B use the average rate of change found in part B1 to estimate the total number of plays for T equals 1.5 months. So what we do is take the initial number of plays, which was 25, plus the average rate of change times the number of months, which would be 1.5. So you would have 28.375 thousand Part three, let A of T represent the estimate of the total number of plays for the song in thousands using the average rate of change found in part B, I. For A of 1.5 found in part B2, it can be shown that A of 1.5 is less than D of 1.5. Explain why, in general, A of T is less than D of T for all T. Your explanation should include a reference to the graph of D and its relationship to A of T. Basically, this third part is getting at the relationship between the curvature of the graph and a secant line. So A sub T is going to be less than D of T because the secant line that we draw between the two endpoints is underneath the curve of D because D is concave down on that interval. So the estimate for A sub T is going to be less than the actual value of D of T. And there we have the concise statement for part three. In part C, quadratic function model D has exactly one absolute min or one absolute max. That men or max can be used to determine the domain restriction for D. Based on the context of the problem, explain how that minimum or maximum can be used to determine the boundary for the domain of D. So here's the thing. This table represents the total number of plays of songs. The function models that. As time goes by, the total number of songs cannot decrease. Since this is a parabola and the leading coefficient is negative, it's going to open downward having a max value. So at the max value, that's going to be the last point where this function is going to be valid because after that point, the function is going to then begin decreasing. If we find the t value at which the function has a max, then that is going to be the right endpoint of our domain restriction. Also, you can't have less than zero months after the musician began using the app, so we know the domain is going to be between zero and whatever t value produces that max. So the t value is going to be the opposite of b over 2a, negative 2.75 over 2 times negative 0.125 and that's going to be 11. So I know the domain for t is going to be between 0 and 11. I'll type that up in a concise statement. And that concludes question number two. Now we're ready to jump into question number three. This deals with a guitar string being plucked and how it vibrates up and down. We have the graph here of the situation, the graph H and its dashed midline for two full cycles is shown. The five points F, 
G, J, K, and P are labeled on the graph. There's no scale, no axis. We want to determine the possible coordinates for those five points. F is the beginning point. And since this is the midline, and we know that the string goes up two millimeters and down two millimeters, then point F is going to be at the beginning and it's going to be at a height of two. G is right at the midline, so that would be at zero. J has a y value of negative two. K has a y value of zero, and P is going to have a y value of two. Now we need to get the corresponding t values. So we know that it takes, we know that the string goes through this cycle 200 times in one second. So that means that there's one cycle in one two hundredth of a second. So their complete cycle is going to end at one two hundredth like this. So you would have one two hundredth here. J is going to be right in the middle of that, which is at one four hundredth. And then G and K are going to be in the middle of those subsequent intervals, which are 1 eight hundredth and 3 eight hundredths. So those are the five points. Part B, the function H can be written in the form H of T. Find the values of the constants A, B, C, and D. Well, A is the amplitude, which is 2. So we know that A is going to be 2. B is related to the period by the fact that 2 pi over B equals the period. And we already said that it's going to take 1 two hundredth of a second to complete one cycle. So if we solve that for B, B is going to be 400 pi. We'll get to C in a second, but D is equal to zero because the function is not really shifted up or down. So normally the sine function when t is zero, if it's just the basic sine function, is going to start at zero. But when t is zero here, we're at the max value. So basically it's like the sine function got shifted a quarter of a cycle to the left. So a cycle is one two hundredth, a quarter of that's going to be one eight hundredth. So that's our value of C for that one. Part C refer to the graph of H in part A. The T coordinate of G is T1 and the T coordinate of J is T2. So we're talking about G and J on the interval T1 to T2, which of the following is true about H? Well, H would be negative on that interval because this line, midline, corresponds to H equals zero. So it's not going to be positive. Also the function is decreasing between g and j, so h is negative and decreasing. In the second part of c on the interval t1 to t2, describe the concavity of the graph of h and determine whether the rate of change of h is increasing or decreasing. So the concavity of the graph is concave up. I don't know if you know the rhyme, but concave up, graph looks like a cup. Concave down, the graph looks like a frown. So that has a cup shape on that interval. Since it's concave up, when a function is concave up, that means its rate of change is increasing, which creates the upward curvature on that interval. So we would write that out in a concise statement. And there you have it. And that finishes problem number three. Number four, the last question here, the functions g and h are given by part i solve g of x equals four for the values of x in the domain of g. We have g of x equals two log base three of x equals four. Either bring the two up and make it x squared or divide the two off. I recommend dividing the two off in this case, and I'll talk about why in a minute. If we exponentiate both sides with base three, we would get x equals nine. So if you did it the other way and you had log base three of x squared using the power property equals four, exponentiate both sides by three, then you would have x squared equals three to the fourth, which is 81. Then you would take the square root, and typically when you solve an equation and you take the square root, you have to account for the plus or minus. However, the domain of this function has to be a positive value, so that would eliminate negative three. So um, 
x equals 3 only. Part 2, solve h of x equals 3 for all x values in the interval 0 to pi over 2. So h of x equals 4 cosine squared x equals 3. First divide off the 4, so cosine squared x equals 3 fourths. And then take the square root of both sides, so cosine x equals square root of 3 over 2, plus or minus. So cosine of x equals square root of 3 over 2. So that would be x equals pi over 6, and also x equals 11 pi over 6. But we're only going on the interval 0 to pi over 2. Cosine x equals negative root 3 over 2 in quadrants 3 and and 2. If you think about the unit circle, the value would be greater than pi over 2. In other words, this is going to be 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6, but those aren't on the interval. So our only answer is x equals pi over 6. Part b, we have those two functions. Part I, we want to rewrite j as a single logarithm. We could just write this as log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of 2 to the third power or 8 by the power property. And then the addition property, we would multiply those together and get log base 2 of 8x. Then the second one, rewrite k of x as an expression in which tangent appears exactly once and no other trig functions are involved. So if we look at this, cosecant squared x minus 1 is the Pythagorean identity for cotangent squared x. Then you could rewrite this as 6 tangent squared by the reciprocal identity of cotangent. And then a factor of tangent cancels and you have 6 tangent x. And then finally, the last one, the function m is given by m of x. Find all input values in the domain of m that yield an output value of 0. So this is basically an exponential equation, but it's also in a quadratic form. If you let u equal e to the x, and we'll show you how this works. You can rewrite e to the 2x as e to the x squared, at minus e to the x minus 12 equals 0. And if u is e to the x, then this would be u squared minus u minus 12 equals 0. Then we could factor this into u minus 4 times u plus 3 equals 0. Then we take each factor, u minus 4 equals 0, so u equals 4. And if u is e to the x, then e to the x equals 4. Take the natural log of both sides, x equals natural log 4. Then we take the other factor, u plus 3 equals 0, u equals negative 3 e to the x e equals negative 3. And if you take the natural log of both sides, there's no solution for that. So you have only x equals natural log 4. So that's a wrap for this free response question. I hope this helped you understand the thinking behind the question. If you found this helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more AP tips, walkthroughs, and practice problems. Also, I have a ton of AP calculus videos and free response questions, multiple choice questions, reviews. Let me know in the comments which of the free response questions were most difficult for you. Make sure you check out my different playlists and videos. All right, guys, take care.